Hi folks, this is a follow up to my first gyro video where I performed a couple of experiments to see if I could replicate the work of Leon Foucault back in 1852 where he proposed that a spinning gyroscope can demonstrate the spin of the earth below us. So I'm just getting this one up to full speed um, with the motor. So I'll take that off, turn the motor off, and come on, there we go. So I've got that spinning really fast, 12,000 RPM according to the manufacturer, um, and I want to put out a challenge, and that is that I'm prepared to, to post this gyroscope out to anybody who believes that the earth spins and that Leon Foucault's experiments back in 1852 were um, legitimate and not flawed in any way and they believe that this can be demonstrated using a gyroscope. So I will post this out including all the little accessories that you get for the gimbal, the counterweight, you know, some of the accessories, the, the electric motor. Um, and the deal is that I'll give you, say, what, 30 days from receipt of the gyroscope to put out a video showing the apparent drift due to the rotation of the earth below us um, to the exact uh, to the, de the exact angle um, according to your latitude on the earth. And it must be precise and it must be um, videoed and put up on YouTube. Um, I would like it back after 30 days, um, regardless of whether you can or can't um, replicate the, the, the outcome. Um, so I've had 33,000 views on the first video and nobody yet has come back and um, showed me any proof, you know, demonstrated anything to the contrary. Um, you would have thought it would be pretty easy. This was, this was a known problem or it's apparently a known problem. It's inherent to all gyros. They all they all um, exhibit this apparent drift due to the rotation of the Earth. Um, yet, from the, the couple of people who have demonstrated this so far on YouTube, haven't been able to replicate it. I mean, some somebody must be able to replicate it. It's a known. It's an apparently a known problem, and different technologies such as Schuler tuning have been invented to overcome it. Well, this gyroscope doesn't need any Schuler tuning because it can't be replicated. And we all know that science is um, all about replication, repeatability. Um, if it can't be repeated, it's not science. Um, so there's the challenge right off the bat. Um, I'll pay for postage. Um, you get in a gyroscope for absolutely nothing to demonstrate it on. If you don't think this one's suitable, then let us know which gyroscope, which type of gyroscope you do think would be suitable. I will purchase it, as long as it's not too much money. I'll test it, and I'll send it to you. You can test it, and we'll see if there is any validity to this at all, because from the results I'm getting, there is none. So one of the problems that somebody um, came up with is that this is just a toy. Um, I don't know, this this here is just a toy. This is a toy gyroscope and I'll spin it up now. So, you see this is still moving. And we'll see what the difference is between a toy and a piece of precision engineering. And so, what else? Yes, in in my first experiments, I didn't clarify which direction the compass was, sorry, the, um, the gyroscope was aligned, whether it was north, south, east, west, somewhere in between. Um, I, can, I can confirm that it was, um, in both experiments, it was 140 degrees or 320 degrees, depending on which way you look at it. Um, so it was southeast or northwest, depending on which way you looked at it. 
in one experiment the camera was this side, on the other experiment the camera was this side, so it was 180 degree opposed from each other. Um, not, that I, not, that I de um, not that that makes or should make a difference according to the sources I've been using, which is the a website called theairlinepilots.com. They've got a page dedicated to it explaining all the maths. Um, they don't mention the orientation, north, south, east or west. Um, all they all they say is uh, that this is dependent on, you can see this stop now, this is still going. All they say that it's dependent upon is the orientation of the gyro, whether it's vertically um, aligned or horizontally aligned and that, that refers to the spin axis of the gyro. So here's the spin axis, this is vertical, this would be horizontal. Like that. <clears throat> so if it's if it's horizontal like this, the the calculation is um, fifteen times the sine of the latitude in degrees per hour, um, and if it's like this, it's um, fifteen times the cos cosine of the latitude in degrees per hour. So it doesn't mention anything about the particular direction that these are in. Um, Another problem somebody had was that the duration that I tested it for wasn't long enough. <clears throat> um, I tested it for, in this sort of configuration without the motor. I tested it for six minutes, just over, and it was supposed to move 1.2 degrees in them six minutes, but it didn't move at all. Um, I'm not sure what testing it for any longer would have achieved. If it didn't move 1.2 degrees in six minutes, it's not going to, if I run it for an hour, it's not suddenly going to jump. So I'm not quite sure what the problem is with that. Um, besides the fact somebody else has repeated this since since I did it, and they've done it for an, an entire six hours, and they've uploaded the whole six-hour video to YouTube. So I'm going to point, I'm going to link to all these source sources in the description. Um, what else? Um, in the in the what in the powered experiment that I did, somebody um, said that. The fact that this got that this has got a wire on it, with sort of the the wire here, was acting as an anchor and preventing it from turning. Now that could be a factor. I do agree. However, um, I have tested this for quite a lot, and this sort of I did leave it quite slack on mine. Um, so if it did want to move, it could have pulled it, and these are perfectly capable of pulling them. Some people have said that they don't believe the torque is enough to overcome, they don't believe the torque is enough to overcome the friction in the gimbal set here and here, this this movement here. However, in the experiment I did demonstrate using a turntable that I was manually spinning. I know it was faster than what the Earth supposedly spins or not, maybe. Um, but relatively speaking, it was faster. Um, but it was still, you could still see it moving. I'm going to, I'll show you again, what, um, I'll repeat it here now. So you can see it. Um, some people said the calculation was wrong. Well, I, I've told where my source was. If somebody can tell me a different calculation and, and point a source to it, then please do. Um, but regardless, the gyro is supposed to drift. What, what difference does the calculation matter if it was right or wrong, as long as it wasn't supposed to like um, rotate sort of 0 0.001 of a degree and over the time I tested it for you wouldn't have been able to see that that's the only that's the only sort of way that the calculation could have had any bearing on it um, but like I say I've, I've told you where I got the calculations from it should have moved 1.2 degrees but it didn't um, what else yeah there's I just wanted to point out that to make a good gyro there's three properties required uh, one is a high rotational velocity, or high angular velocity of the flywheel. And um, the faster it's spinning, the better the better the effect. The second property is that the flywheel needs to be perfectly balanced. It will spin much much longer if it's perfectly balanced. And then obviously the third is to have low loss or low friction bearings, um, all of which this particular gyro has. Otherwise, it would not still be spinning right now. Um, 
one of the flaws from um, Foucault's experiments that I've discovered that um, probably played a part in it <coughs> is that as these things are spinning down the the precession is less precise you can see now look it's still spinning and it will still process you see however um, because it's spinning so slowly there are some times when I can actually move this and it won't move and that's because it's spinning slowly now so as Foucault's gyroscope was spinning down as the earth was supposedly spinning underneath and this was doing this it was giving it this sort of you can see it's not moving at all not actually moving at all however if I give it a quick there you go it tends to do this as it's when it's spinning much slower when it's spinning at full speed there's no delay in this whatsoever it's very very precise you move this and it moves that instantaneously and this thing will spin for 19 minutes from from if I don't mess around with it because every time you move it slightly it takes some it takes some of the energy out of the flywheel if I leave it spinning without moving it after powering it up with the motor to full speed it will spill it will spin for 19 minutes that's what I've timed it for um, when I was flying a Robinson R22 helicopter if I landed it turn the engine off turn the electrics off the gyro in there you can hear it still spinning um, it would spin for about 10 minutes before it toppled over um, this bit this spins for longer than the gyros in that the R22 helicopter so this this should by for all intents and purposes this should be a perfect demonstration tool to replicate what Leon Foucault did it looks very similar to what the um, apparatus he used as well in the configuration that got it um, and the the other thing I would like to point out is the Foucault's pendulum the guy the same guy that um, proposed that a spinning gyroscope could demonstrate the earth spinning um, he also proposed that a, a swinging pendulum could also have the same effect um, and it is virtually um, the same analog it's the same thing it's the same sort of principles demonstrating the same effect um, now I've never I've never actually seen a Foucault's pendulum I've never witnessed one working I would like to, but there's none nearby to where I live. But I don't think it'd be too difficult to um, to replicate a four quarts pendulum. What you need is a really tall building, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who's got access to a really tall building. And I'm thinking something like an old bowling ball, if you don't mind, um, drilling into it and to fix an anchor point into it. And then you, all you need is a piece of thin steel wire and some sort of way of um, attaching it at the top so that it's got a it's free to spin in any direction um, uh, it doesn't have to be brass the ones the common ones that are um, in museums and everything they're all made of brass and although not publicly uh, mentioned on places like Wikipedia brass is very very slightly magnetic I can get a neodymium, a tiny little neodymium magnet, and I can stick it to my brass flywheel on this gyroscope. Um, so I think that the brass in the Foucault's pendulum has something to do with why they're spinning. I've mentioned it in previous videos, it's a, a theory of mine. So I'm thinking that if we use a bowling ball with no uh, magnetic properties, no ferrous magnetic properties to it, and we test that, um, we might get some different results. As you can see, this thing is actually still spinning very slowly now, but let's see if, we, yep, we've still got some procession going on. So if you are up for the challenge, any spinning earth proponents out there who would like to um, have a go at debunking this, showing some sort of spin, 
using either this gyroscope or any other gyroscope, any other gyroscope, then please let me know. Thanks for watching.